Beamable microservices allow game makers to deploy server authoritative C Sharp. Moving key parts of your game logic to the server makes it more secure. Beamable microservices is a solution with excellent developer workflow and tooling. There's three steps to setting up microservices in your project. The first is to set up Docker. The containers will run the microservices. Then you create the microservice itself, defining the input and output, much like any other type of method. And the third step is to call that microservice by communicating from your client C Sharp to your server C Sharp. One of the great benefits with the Beamable workflow is that your client C Sharp and your server C Sharp sit in the same project using the same code editor and have a very friendly workflow. Let's take a look at an example. First, there's the traditional C Sharp approach. This is not using microservices at all. We pass in two values and we return the sum of them. Here, the add my values is happening on a method on the client side. To migrate this using Beamable C Sharp microservices to be server authoritative, we very simply add the client callable attribute and do additional setup to make sure that Beamable recognizes this code as a microservice. And now we have the add my values occurring on the server side. The input from the client and the output back to the client remains the same. So there's a minimal change to the footprint of your code. Now here inside this project, I've set up a few empty folders where I'm gonna be putting my code. Let's start by creating a new scene. And I'll create a C sharp mono behavior to go with that scene. Notice that I'm separating my code here on, from a client folder to a server folder. That's not explicitly needed, but it's going to be helpful to understand which portion of the code is running on the client and which is on the microservice and thus running on the server side. We'll get started with our scene here, just adding an empty game object. Then we'll add in our example script. So now the scene is wired up. Now let's create the code for the microservices example itself. Here we're going to start again, not yet using the microservices. Here we are in our example code that's complete for a non microservices starting point. Uh, some of the naming and structure makes most sense as we get closer to the end here. For example, I've named a method set up beamable. We haven't yet needed to set up beamable, but I do that for consistency. So in the start here, we simply log out that we're in the start just to verify where we are in the execution flow. We will add two numbers together. I'm using 10 and 5 to add up to 15 and calling the local method here of add my values. Let's run the scene and see how that works. We see the start and our result. Now, whatever the gameplay logic is that you have, here we're doing the simple addition, you consider should we and could we move this to the server side? Now there's many different implementation paths for following that. Here with Beamable Microservices, we're going to see an excellent developer central workflow to be able to do that with ease. We'll start here by going to our Beamable Microservices Manager, or also in the toolbox, we can open up Microservices Manager this way. This is going to be useful for deploying our microservice once we're ready with it. To create the microservice, we'll use the Beamable Utilities to create a new microservice. I'll call it My Microservice. Now here in the project window, we can see that Beamable has created the My Microservice class and surrounding folders and files that are needed. We also see in the console, there's some confirmation messaging and the Microservices Manager window has refreshed this and more information. The next step is to go into the My Microservice service itself and add the implementation that we want. Here we see the stub code that Beamable gives us for our new microservice. 
Let's replace that with the needs for our specific example project. Now let's take a look at this code in depth. We use the microservice attribute and the client callable attribute to mark this class and the method or methods that we want to call. We replace the implementation with the name and signature and implementation that makes sense for us. And then we're going to save that and pop back into Unity. Each time we do such a change, we see the console here is regenerating some code for us to be used with our example. That regenerated code will be placed up here in Beamable's auto-generate. You can take a look at that if you want, but the details really are going to be important once we look at our example and mocking it up. So remember, here is our starting point, which does not yet use the microservices. Now, how would we replace this with code that calls our microservice? Here we've replaced the original implementation with the new one, which uses our microservice. You can see here that we've instantiated a my microservices client, and we're able to call directly on that with the method of add my values. We can pass in whichever values we want, and we easily get the result back. Notice here that line 25, which feels very much like client-side code, is actually being called on the server. Depending on how you've deployed this, it could either be running on a Docker instance locally on your machine during development, or a live deployment on a remote server somewhere. Let's take a look at how we run the Unity scene and see the results. Now in this case, in any case, when you've edited the microservice itself, you need to build from the microservices manager. So let's hit build there. Then we'll start the server. And then let's run the scene. And we've got the result there. You can see here that each time you run a scene where you're using a microservice, Beamable will inform you if you're using the local server, which we are because we've built and started the server here, or remote server. Let's see how we would deploy this and use the remote server. We use the Beamable Microservices Manager to stop the running server, and we will write the manifest. Here we're able to deploy one or more services. We've just got one here with the My Microservice. You can fill out these other details, see docs.beamable.com for more information about those. And then we just continue. And now in the running scene, we can see that My Microservice is using the live version, the deployed code, and it works properly. As a final review, let's just reflect that here in the code base, I've been inside Unity and inside my favorite code editor the whole time. We've used our familiar c -sharp programming language and coded on the left, code that sits on the client and stays and deploys there, and code on the right, code that I set up to run on the server. The Beamable Microservices system allows the flexibility for a faster deployment with local server using Docker, and is easy to deploy online for when you're ready to test with other team members or let your end users play the game live around the world. That's it. Thanks.